but first he will need the right cutting tool for the job, a Devon bill hook. He's come to see Roger Bonney at the Finch foundry on Dartmoor. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me over. It's a pleasure. So I've come here to see if we can get a traditional Devonshire style bill hook made up. Yeah, well, we've certainly come to the right place. Here's Simon, one of our smiths. Hello, Simon. Hello. Hello. He's the chap that'll make uh, the tool that you require. We're just basically um, getting it roughly there, but we're not going to forge it right out yet because it's going to be quite thin. Right. OK, ready to go in the right, Back in again. Tool making had long been the job of the local village blacksmith. But by the Edwardian age, larger, state-of-the-art forges began to take over. At the Finch foundry, blacksmiths manufactured over 400 tools a day. They made a whole range of stuff, and we've got a catalogue, actually. This is from our period, this? Yes. Ah, oh, fantastic. And you can see that yeah. they made tools yeah. for every occasion here. Yeah. All sorts of things here. The selection of shovels, different patterns. You'll notice there's a Cornish shovel and there's a Devon shovel. Slightly smaller. So we've got a Cornish shovel and a Devon shovel. They're the bigger lads down in Cornwall. <laughs> we can't agree on anything either side of the <laughs> table. <laughs> so two different patterns. But this isn't just a cottage industry, is it? It's gone up a gear, up a step. This is no longer what perhaps a lot of us remember as the village forge or a smithy. Yeah. This is mass production. Yeah. The forge uses water power technology to drive heavy hammers and pump air into its fires. Right, now, this is, this is the water wheel here which drives the fan. Right, we're going to open this one up yeah. using this lever here. Oh, fantastic! Slowly, it's starting to turn. There it goes. That's it. That wheel drives through a lot of gearing inside the building here, a fan. And that fan was used to replace the original bellows. Right. The, the good news for me today is that I'm not going to be spending the whole You're day... You're not going to be spending the whole day pumping bellows. Water and gravity is going to be doing that for me. That's right. Fantastic. The water-powered machine blows air into the hearth bringing the fire up to a temperature of 1,500 degrees centigrade, hot enough to soften iron and steel. So what do we actually start? Starting with the raw materials. So what we've got here is a piece of wrought iron. Right. This normally came in big bars known as pigs. Pigs. OK? Small piece, piglet. Piglet, right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but what we do with this, yep. we hammer this out and we finish up with something like this. Two pieces of wrought iron. Yeah. And running right down through the middle. Yeah. A bit like the filling in a sandwich. Yeah. Is a piece of what's known as sheer steel. Sheer steel. Yeah. Right. Now that is a, a version of hardened metal. And then once it's ground, that hard steel edge is exposed. Comes through the middle. That's right. So you start off with the sandwich like so, yep. and it grinds it down like that, yep. and it comes to the and point. And it comes to the point. And that's your cutting edge. And that was the secret of the success of this business. Ah, I see. The mysterious art of the blacksmith. Yep. We're thinning the blade edge now, so... Right. I'm trying to keep it straight and maintain that shape. Just follow me. If I go slow, you go slow. One more gently. Just clean it up. At the forge, Alex's Devon billhook is taking shape. Right, now we need to uh, take some material down quite rapidly. Right. Just to speed things up, we can take that down with the trippet hammers. So we have the technology here with the trip hammers. And these are the very last surviving authentic trip hammers, which, with a little bit of luck, we can still see working. The three-quarter-of-a-ton hammer is powered by its own water wheel. Wow. 
That's quite some engineering, isn't it? It is. Made in Tavistock, right. the largest of our water wheels. It uh, produces something like about uh, 12 and a half horsepower. Oh, right, OK. So that's pretty, when you think of the size of a shy horse, 12 and a half shy horses. 12 and a half shy horses. That's really something, that is. And, of course, you don't have to feed this. No. This is all free. <laughs> it all feeds itself. It feeds itself. All we need is the, the water. Yeah. Oh, we've got plenty of that today. Plenty of that in this part of the world. Yes. Well, I suppose you'd better see it in motion. I'll give you a shout. I'll stand back. Yes, please do. You'll get wet otherwise. <laughs> So here we go, time to see the biggest wheel working. OK, Roger, we're ready! So this is the moment then when Finch's boundary comes to life. And there we go, wow, look at that! Listen to that sound. It's almost like a steam engine. All the belts are turning. You ready? The trip hammer helps to flatten out the bill hook saving the blacksmith valuable time and effort. What you saw was just a fraction of what it would have been. Right. So in our heyday, in yep. mass production, this hammer would have been really hammering. Right. It would have actually been striking at 240 beats a minute. 240 beats a minute. Pretty much a blur. That one's three quarters of a ton. Three quarters of a ton. This one... That bad boy. ..is a ton and a quarter. We daren't use this one. This would shake the whole building apart. <laughs> <laughs> this was used to make plate to make blades for shovels. Right, oh, so you're really smacking down to get really thin. That's right. You couldn't buy plate ready-made. You've got yep. to make your own from that same raw material. Right. Do you remember? Yeah. The pig. So you've got the pig there. We're hammering that out. Yeah. To make a sheet. Yep. And we end up with something a bit like this. Oh, fantastic. That forms the basic shape of, in this case, ah, a Devon shovel. They are responsible for forming the Devon landscape, really. They're that kind of odd shape, because, by and large, down here in the West Country, there's so much stone in the ground... Yeah, ..that yeah. the traditional garden spade is totally useless. <laughs> right, just a general clean-up now. In the foundry's heyday, a blacksmith could make a billhook from scratch in half an hour. Give it a good brush-up. Um, and uh, probably we run the rasp over just to take any uh, rough edges. Are you going to pay the man? I'm going to pay you, yeah, I'll yeah. pay you. Yeah, number seven, what's yeah, that? Yeah, number seven, 12 shillings. A dozen. A dozen. Yeah. Shilling a piece. Yes, yes, that's, so that's what, 5p each. You've made yourself five pence today, Simon. Well, don't you know what spend, I'm going to do with that? Don't I'm spend gonna it go all the pub. You're going to I'll get a few pints for that. Buy, it, buy yourself a sip of cider. And if you flip it over again for me. There we are. There it is. My authentic Devonshire bill hook. That's fantastic. All hand forged. All with water power. All with water power as well. You couldn't get more authentic than that, I don't think. I hope that gives you many years of good service. <laughs>